daughter, Cecily Rose, and I'm Sally Whiney. And we're gonna show you some of the things that we make. So one day I made Cece a special gift and sent it home. For I liked it because it doesn't burn my hands when I eat. So what do you do? What do you put in there? I put my mac and cheese balls in it so I can not burn my hands with it and to say that I love it. Now we're going to get started on how to make it. Now you might have bought the kit and um, if you did, this is what comes in it enough to make two cozies, um, two contrasting colors, they're already pre-cut, and the batting for behind, behind them. There's gonna be two pieces of batting per bowl. So there's one that'll be connected here and one that'll be connected here. So what I have also is a stuffing stick. You take your pieces out, or if you are cutting it yourself, you're cutting, for one, you will be cutting two pieces of fabric, contrasting fabric, or the same if you want, 10 inch by 10 inch, and two pieces of, um, this is 100% wool batting. You wanna make sure it's microwavable. If you don't get the right type of wool batting, you won't, it won't be a cozy, it will be hot, it won't, it won't keep you cold, so you'll find that out pretty quick. All right, so we're gonna lay these pieces on top, and I'm gonna get some pins here and just pin it in as close as you can. Like it, the wool batting sometimes stretches a little bit, but you, you wanna get it um, on there as best you can. If it goes out a little bit, that's better than being inside your material because we will trim that after we do the sewing because material does um, stretch and move. So I'm just putting the four pins in. And then it's a, it's a little type of quilting. If you've quilted, you'll, you'll appreciate it. It's just pretty much like quilting. Now, here's the one piece. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna make a, a, a sewing machine line here to here and here to here so that it will hold it in place with the batting. So the easiest way to do that is to take a um, plastic ruler and I love this see-through see ruler it's so good for many things and start at the tip and draw a chalk line from one end one point to the other point now I would do this um, if I however many cozies I'm making I, I this would save a lot of time if I sit down and do this to each piece before. Um, now, if it doesn't isn't quite right, that's okay. You just want to get the center point, which is here, and when you stick it in your sewing machine, eyeball that to make your cross in the center. Let's say you already have a bobbin in and your thread in, and every time you start sewing, you wanna put your needle down so that it doesn't, this thread here doesn't pull out, because I mean, I do it all the time, even though I'm telling you that, and it's so frustrating. Also, be sure that you're using the right kind of type of thread um, with your materials. So with a cotton, you just wanna use a regular all-purpose thread that you can get in the store with no, you know, no special thing on it. And, um, your needle probably would be a 14 size needle for this uh, cotton fabric. So anyway, we got it down there. We're okay, I think we're okay. Ah, look, there it is. I'm following the chalk line that I drew on there, which will disappear. And I'm, I'm taking the chalk line directly down the little slot there. You don't wanna stick your finger where I just did because that's when you get a needle. And when you get to the end, lift your presser foot here. Make sure you pull enough thread out so that you're not gonna lose that stitch and make a clip. And we have our first 
our first um, line cool. that's holding it in. Good job. Ta da! Thanks. Yeah, this is the. Drop that down. Again, well, put your needle in. Make sure your needle's set. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is uh, you don't always have to use uh, the pedal to get things done. You have this ha a handle over here on the side, and it's very you can you can move that. That won't hurt it. You can move forwards or backwards. So now I got it started, and I'm going to follow that line again. Here's one little trick. When I first started making these, and since um, it's a little different than making a teddy bear, I just would take it like this and then put the two sides together and sew it, pin it, and sew it up. But, well, there's a little more to do before that. But anyway, what you should do now is get rid of these excess. Because when you do this, if you don't cut that edge off, when you sew it back up, you're going to miss some of of this and when you turn your fabric you'll have the raw edges showing so I'm gonna take my ruler I know it might be a little long but I'm giving you all the all the secrets the one thing I hated and, and I've done I've taught so many and made so many patterns but before when I learned from a pattern they didn't tell you everything you know they just told you what they wanted to tell you because they don't really didn't want you to learn. I thought that of all pattern companies. I thought that they always leave something out. I hope we don't, because my goal is to give you every opportunity to, um, you see how nice that is finished edge? To make a nice, a nice piece. And the other thing I didn't like is if it looked homemade. I mean, I, I don't know why I wanted it to look, I don't want to just say homemade, but I wanted it to have you know, nice finish edges. And uh, so the other day I designed a dress for me. I hadn't done that for a long time. Had, it was actually a pantsuit. Had it all ready to put on and, well, didn't have a zipper in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's wide open, you had a breeze, huh? <laughs> So, I mean, don't take me for, you know, I might not be doing everything right. <laughs> I just had to sit there and laugh. So, you made a beautiful pantsuit, looks gorgeous, and there's no way. Oh, hold that up real quick, Mom. Oh, that looks really okay. good, and you couldn't tell from laying down. So, super clean edges. Yeah, yeah. Good job. And, uh... I'm going to show you a really cool secret too. Now, you know, when you're sewing, your sewing machine goes like this. So you always want to plan your, your um, strategies by knowing that your, your seam, you know, your uh, inside of your sewing machine is here. So we're going to put darts on all four corners and um, I'm going to use my trusty little ruler that I like so much and I'm going to put them on one inch and make a mark. And this is uh, two inches here down. I'm going to put a dot. So if you don't have one of the, these rulers, which again, I'm going to try to get on my website, 
So it's one inch over, two inches down, and then you're gonna make a line that goes from here to here. That's where you're gonna sew. Now, again, pin somewhere away from it, or not, but if Sorry. it slips, if it slips, then, then you won't be able to, um, you'll have to rip it out and do it again. You have one of these lovely boards. You can always, somewhere on the board where it's comfortable for you, find the corner right here on the square that's right here and come in one inch, because it, it has inches up here, this is an inch, and make your mark and two inches down would be right here. And then if you, you know, eyeball it, you can do that. That, that helps you make it easier now. You also want to make sure this is folded equally back here with a little pin to make sure you got it right. Because if you have one of these wider or skinnier than the darts in your bowl socket, you know, where your bowl sits. And it would make a wonky bowl. Yeah. I mean, you're not really, you don't have to be perfect, but it certainly would help. It helps to have it. Now, I told you, remember, that this is your sewing line. So you want to take this, this line and... Um, this way and then you need a dart over here so you're gonna flip it like this and now we're gonna put we're gonna mark it on here because it'll make it so much easier I'm gonna put a dot here a dot here with a with a permanent magic marker and two inches down here because I'm gonna make a lot of these and um, I don't have to write on here you can write on here if you want but just remember you know you got your inch over an inch down and then you can put a line there a line here and then draw a line. And again, um, if you're gonna make, you know, more than one of these, well, my chalk is not. I could also use a magic marker on the back of this wool if I wanted to. There we go. So if you run out, if, if it isn't working and you want there, that can work too, but don't do it where it's gonna go through on the other side of the fabric. Okay, so you have this side and this side, and we're gonna sew that up do you have enough thread out here so that it doesn't pull out into your thing? Set your needle down into the beginning of the dart at the one inch mark on the top of your fabric. And so Now you want to do a reverse stitch here. Here. And then when you get to the uh, the end of the dart, there's two things you can do. Um, you can reverse it, which is what I'm gonna do here. But if you wanna be extra special, uh, amazing, you can pull it out without reversing it and cut enough thread and try to, is this on here? You can see this, Abby. You can take each of these threads and tie a knot and tie several knots. Okay. I am not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not worried that much about it. I think it'll be fine with a with a reverse stitch, but I just want you to know that, you know, there's, there's different options. Just because I'm saying it doesn't mean it's right. It just means that's how I do it. So I'm gonna go in reverse. Come down, reverse it again. Lift up my presser foot, pull it out carefully. Look at this, look at the little bowl shape we have. Is that amazing? It looks like a little bowl. Very cute. Now, what we have to do is we are almost done. I know it seems like it's taken forever, but it really won't. And once you've made a couple, yeah, you'll do it in your sleep. So here we go. We're trimming the dart. It's pretty much a quarter, maybe it's a, let me see what it says. Quarter of an inch away from the seam. And this is, um, make it lay flatter. This is, would be a bulky. Um, when we sew, it'll be bulky there. Um, so we want to be careful. And when we're pinning it together, we want to pin one side of the dart to the, to be facing one way and the other side of the dart to be facing the other way and I'm going to show you that now. Wow, I'm so excited. 
So we're gonna take the right sides together. This is the other part. And I cut them. We're gonna set it inside the bowl like so. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, isn't that fun? Yeah. Ta-da. Right sides together, notice that? And we're also gonna remember to leave when we're sewing, we're gonna, I'm gonna take these two green pins because I wanna have an opening um, to turn when we get to the turning part, which remember I have something special to show you about turning. And I mean, for those of you that have sewn for a while and maybe not know this because I, I watched a couple videos of different people and I wanted to call them up right away and say, listen, you're just making that too hard. So we're gonna make it easier. But now if you see here, the dart, I don't wanna fold both of them going the same way because that's gonna make it really thick right there. But I wanna make sure the seams are together and then pin one one way and one the other and have your pin there. Now your dart is gonna, your opening is gonna be left here about an inch or two. You wanna have your corner sewn. So I'm just gonna go around here. Now you might wanna use more pins than I am. And remember um, to pull them out as you go so they don't, uh, so you don't run over them. you don't worry if you make that mistake. You want to make sure that both edges are pretty much equal. When you go to turn the corner, you drop it down in, lift up your pressure foot, turn it, and you'll see there's little lines on your sewing machine that can tell you how many, um, what you're coming in. Seam-wise, um, what are you at? Well, it says uh, half an inch. Now, um, universally, five eighths of an inch is uh, like when you're when I'm designing a pattern, I uh, make it five eighths of an inch more. Or when I print the pattern or draw the pattern to fit me, I put five eighths of an inch because that's what. And there is a five eighths of an inch mark right here. I also noticed on this machine there's an inch thing. So I, if I wanted to make sure my darts were correct. That's on there too, which is really nice. To use um, use those to your advantage to keep it lined up. This one I'm just keeping lined up to see at the edge of the uh, presser foot. And then when I come to the corner, I want to make sure that it's dropped down in. Lift up your presser foot and turn. Cool. See so yeah, how that makes it easier? If you don't have your needle down in, it's going to slide all That also gives you a point instead of doing a more rounded edge. Point. Right. Now if you wanted a, that, you'd have to change it. You can make a scallop edge on these, on these uh, pot holders also. A nice round scallop edge. But when I was deciding which one I wanted to do, um, I came up with this one because the rounded edges gave me less to take it in and out of the microwave with is you set the bowl in the cozy and then put it into the microwave. And then you can just pick up the edges. I was so excited to see how much Cece loves it. And I wasn't thinking about, you know, for a little kid, they can sit and watch their TV show and, you know, yeah. do it. Okay, so you can do back stitch right when you get here. I'm leaving, I left the space here for, uh, for turning. Take out my one. 
And you want to, you don't need to clip too much of these because they're going to all be inside. But if you wanted to be, well, prim and proper with it, you should clip, trim all the, all the threads. And if you trim them as you go, then it makes it easier. Now, before we turn it, we're going to take, you'll see this right here. I'm going to take my scissors and be careful not to snip through uh, the stitching, but cut the corner off like so on each of these. And why should we do that? Because it will make such a better um, point on the other side. Now, for those of you who have been turning things for a long time and don't know, lots of times, and this is, this is not wrong, I mean, this is what you think you should do. You think you should go here and start turning, right? And push your, that's probably what you do. You start right at the edge. Don't do that. I have a little opening here, not a real big one. And I'm gonna go to the furthest point with my finger. Can you see how I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. And and I'm in that point, at the furthest point. And I'm gonna push that gently, that point through the hole. It ripped a little, but that's okay. Then I'm gonna take my uh, chopstick from lunch and push it through. And now gently, just gently work it what? Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Very you know, cool. Look how much time that saved. One time I was teaching a uh, teddy bear class, her friend was teaching teddy bear class and I was helping her and everybody in the class was trying to turn this little bitty arm and leg and oh, it was taking forever. And so I just started at one end because it was her class. I didn't really want to interrupt her. And I just started one end of the classroom and turned everybody's stuff before it was all over. So you can just stick your Stick in there and push out that point. Nice, see, nice point. Mm -hmm. Go to the next point, make sure that's out. The next point. Okay. And now this last point where you have the opening. Let's do it gently. You always want to have your corners done though and have your opening to the side, you know, and then pull your threads. Now these threads you do want to trim. You don't want threads sticking out there. And this is going to get turned in like so. And actually, this is the only part that I am going to pin is the opening where I turned it through. I'm going to um, pin that closed, okay? Now, there, I do not have an iron set up today. So we're going to pretend iron with our hands. I call this my... <laughs> pretend ironing. You want to make sure that these seams are pushed out. But you would suggest ironing all the edges. I would suggest taking your iron and you know pressing it like this. I'm I'm I call it finger pressing, I guess. Making sure that it's nice and smooth because you're gonna have this bulky areas here that your needle could get caught in. And if that happens, just slow down and do use the hand on, you'll see when we do it. But you see everything is turned out and we're gonna pretend I ironed it. And we're gonna sew our stitch right around here, our top stitch, and then we will have a finished product. I really don't want the stitches to overlap when I get to the end. So I'm gonna um, slide this in here a little bit from the point. Now, I want my top stitching edge to be closer to, uh, closer to the edge than what my seam was. So if you see, I'm in a little bit there on that. I don't know. What are you at now? A quarter I, of an well, inch? Well, it doesn't even say. Yeah, to a quarter of an inch in, okay? Let me see if I can get it. An eighth of an inch? A quarter of an inch. It says on there, I think. One thing when you're getting older, sometimes your eyes don't. Again, start with the needle down. And you don't have to hurry on this. I have. Now, see, I'm getting to a bulky point, so I'm just going to take my time, and I might have to guide it through a little. Yeah, pulled, pulled on it a little bit. Okay. Took my pin out, and I'm going over the closing now. When I get to the point, I drop it down in, lift my presser foot, turn, 
And start again. Now you're going to have to pull it. There's a, a little tool I don't have yet that I'm going to get that helps you to uh, push that through there. I'm not sure what the name of it is. But, um, since I've been So we're gonna just take the extra, come on over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick it up so you can see everybody's okay. cute faces. Okay, sit here. And this cozy is for Lucy. Cece. Because we're gonna be on YouTube. So what do you need to do on YouTube? Subscribe and hit that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys, this is our first one and we hope to see you back soon. Yeah. Say, wave, say goodbye. Bye. Bye.